There's a, a couple things I <clears throat> left out from the last one, so I'll go ahead and do those real quick. The first thing we're going to want to do is create the network manager. This is going to be our own implementation of the networking. We're going to create a singleton that manages the WebSocket and stuff like that. Uh, for now, we're just going to have it there. We're not going to do the networking yet. We're just going to create the scripts that need to be there. So the first script we're going to want to put is the network manager. Then we're going to put the enemy spawner over here as well. And lastly, we're going to put the player spawner. Okay, so now that we have the three scripts there, we're going to put those in the scripts folder. And <clears throat> I'm going to create the um, the display for joining the uh, network um, as well. So for that, we're going to do a uh, UI canvas with the uh, screen space overlay. So we're going to create another canvas and let's switch to game view so we can see that. <clears throat> um, so I think we can just leave the defaults and then we're going to create a panel that we can use for that. Okay, so on the panel, we're going to want to do the vertical layout group on this one. So we're going to add a component to the panel called vertical layout group. And uh, I'm going to do a little bit of padding on this stuff. Let's do 10 for everything. OK, so once we have our panel, we need to create our form inputs. So uh, that's going to the first one we're going to want to do is the text. So this one will be called Network Join Game. Um, let me center the uh, panel. We'll put it in the middle. And then let me reset this. Join game. We'll do another text down here called, uh, let's call this one title. Player name label. So this one will be called Player name. It seems off to me. I think it's just because like the panel itself is pretty big. So let's go back over here and change some stuff. We'll do two hundred by two hundred and then Gonna add some other inputs. So next, we're gonna want to put an input field for the player name, and that does not look correct. But okay, that looks better. So 
So let's call this player name input. I think that's good. And then lastly, we'll put a button for submission. Uh, we'll call this join game button. Let's reset that. And cosmetically, I'm just going to align this to the left. I think that looks pretty good. Let's save that and um, I'll just call this join game canvas and move that to prefabs. We're pretty much done with that one. Um, I'll leave it there, but I'll disable it for now. Um, we'll come back to that one later on. Um, so now that we have our join game canvas and our network manager with all that stuff, let's make this a prefab too, just so that all this stuff is uh, easily re recreated. Um, so now that we have all our scripts, we can start filling them out. So let's start with the uh, player controller. Actually, the billboard is uh, it's pretty small. We can start with that one. So you can just remove all, well, we'll keep update because we need that, but we'll get rid of these other ones. Um, so we're going to do transform of the game object that look at the camera. So this way it the UI on the player points towards the camera no matter where they're moving so we can see the um, the health bar pretty well. That's it for the billboard. Um, let's see. Yeah, I guess we'll do player controller. So we're going to have some public variables up top. Game object, bullet, prefab, So this last one will make more sense when we start doing the networking. Um, for now, I'm just going to put it as a placeholder in there. Um, actually, let's comment it out because I, I want to be able to test the player moving using the, the input. Uh, so we'll just set it. Well, no, that's fine. So vector So we, we need these later on. We we we're not gonna need them right now, but the purpose of these variables is to um check if the rotation and position actually changed. Um, if the position didn't change, then um, we kind of have these variables as an indicator of that, and we can uh, make sure that uh, we don't, on each um, update, 
frame called we, we don't do a WebSocket call. Um, so if we didn't do this, we'd be sending a lot of network activity that we, uh, that's kind of wasteful. So we, we only want to notify the, um, the server uh, that the player's moving if they actually changed you know, position and rotation, which you'll see later on. Um, I'm just kind of getting the script ready. Uh, we won't be doing the networking, but we're just getting the, the code there. And we'll revisit this. So that, that's kind of what we're doing on start. So start, we just uh, set the current and the old being being the same so that we don't accidentally call an update that the player moved when they, they haven't moved yet. Uh, so we, we already have this, my bad. So an update. So we're gonna have a check up top. So th this check for if the player's local is basically saying, um, because we're going to have a lot of players um, joining the game. And there's going to be one player that's special, which is the player of the the um, client. So that one will have a Boolean set to be true for local player. That way, when we um, get like a, a key up for like, um, you know, changing position, it doesn't change all the players in the game, but it just changes the one player that, you know, is associated with, with that specific client. So that way you can distinguish between the actual person playing and the other people that join. So X and Z is basically going to be our movement for the player. So X is going to be basically like forwards and backwards and Z is going to be uh, the um, rotation of the player. Um, uh, delta time times three, and then so here we'll be doing our actual um, changes to the position and rotation of the game object. So now that we have our, our variables, our float variables set, we can um, change the transform. So the top one there was for forwards and backwards, and the bottom one here is going to be for um, rotation. Okay, so let's do this. Current position equals transform dot position. Current rotation equals transform dot rotation. So then we're going to have this check down here of whether um, the current position is the same as the old position. So if it's not the same, then, you know, we're going to do our networking stuff here. And then we're going to say old position equals current position. So that we don't accidentally send this message out more than once. And we're going to do the same thing for rotation. So we're going to have two separate WebSocket calls for position and rotation, um, just to kind of optimize how much networking data we're sending. Um, we, we want to kind of, you know, limit the uh, amount of um, data that we're sending um, because we might just be moving up and down we might not be rotating so we we might not need to send new rotation information 
So I'll do the same thing over here. You know, we'll, we'll revisit that one. And then uh, old rotation equals current rotation. So this last one for input will be for the um, spacebar. And that will be shooting a bullet from the gun. So we'll have more networking stuff down here. And uh, we'll create another method for this one. Um, one second. Okay, okay, so yeah, that we, we, uh, yeah, this, this is going to be later on. I'll, I'll just comment this out. We're not going to do anything for that. Um, for, for testing, for, for not doing the, um, networking, we're, we're just going to call the, uh, the method directly. So we're going to have a, have a method here for that. And then, um, create an additional method called uh, command fire. And uh, for, for now, um, we're, we're going to pause here and then we'll, we'll keep going with the scripting. All right, thanks.